Welcome guys to my channel Priyasad Dev. Today we have a brand new tutorial and um, we're gonna build a to-do task list with core data and Swift UI for iOS 17. If you have earlier version, don't worry about it. It is compatible with that. And <clears throat> yep, that's it. So make sure to subscribe my channel, ring the bell for the notification, like this video and share this video with your friends. We are gonna learn a lot in this tutorial. You're gonna learn about the core data, how to manage data, how to manage a CRUD uh, functionality in your app, uh, as the create, read, update, and delete the data from our core data database here, uh, built in in uh, Swift and Swift UI. So. We don't uh, want to use any packages to make things more complicated. This is just a simple task uh, to do up. And yep, that's it. We're gonna use some animations and some of the uh, basics of core data. So be with me and yep, get ready to uh, build your own to do a task. You can also add some functionality later on. And yep, that's it. So make sure to subscribe me. Let me just, as you can see on my screen, let me just see, uh, show you a brief and a showcase of the, our final app. And then we are gonna jump to the coding. So this is our app. Uh, let me just rerun it here to see this what is about. So we're gonna use a storyboard launch screen. So here uh, we have a nice welcome view. So we can use add items. So here I say practice coding and I tap save. Yep, that's saved. So when I click there, this is done and we can undone it. You can delete it here. You can edit it. So let me just add something new here. For example, a read book and then save. Yep. Here we have it. So you can uh, change the uh, priority and change the uh, ranking here uh, for your task. You can delete it here right from there. Yep, that's it. And you can just click on it. So that our data is persistent. So if I just rerun the app, uh, we don't know, yep, practice coding is there. So our data is persistent. So enough talking, Let, let's jump to the coding. And in my Xcode, I Press command, uh, command shift and N. So I uh, press an iOS. So the to do list here. So uh, yep, make sure the interface is set to Swift UI. The language is Swift and yep, the storage is none for now here. And let me just create it. So. Here we go. We have a blank new project here in my Xcode. So uh, let me just add some files here. So command and N here. And I just add a core data model here, as you can see. And this is going to be a to do list, a to do item. So to do item here, to do item. And yep, that's it. So let me just grab this one and let me just see. So here we have a new entity. So add new entity and the name would be to do item. So to do item. And for the attribute, we have the ID type string. And then we have a new is complicated and it's come completed completed let me just completed yep and this is a type of boolean where is the boolean yep and then we have a title here so title 
and then this is a string also so these are our uh, attributes for our data model so let me just uh, create an open and a new uh, a new uh, group here so let me just create a new group here naming managers so in our manager we have a swift file here naming data controller here data controller let's save so here we import foundation first and we import our uh, core data here let me just import core data so import core data and then we have a class naming data controller and it is com confirmed to observable object then in our class we have the singleton pattern that make sure that uh, a share instance that uh, has a global access so here we have uh, using a static shared instance instance for global access uh, aka singleton singleton pattern so here it goes so we have static let shared equal to data controller class here it goes and we have a private variable of persistent 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 yep container and this is of ns persistent container type so after that we have a uh, computed variable naming view context Text. Yep. and this is the type of ns manage object context so this is it so return persistent constants this persistent container dot uh, view constants so here it goes and then we have a private init here then we have to uh, define our to do item here to do model here for our uh, data controller so let me just see persistent controller persistent control container equal to ns persistent container and the name would be the to do item so to do item and it goes here so after that we have the persistent container dot load persistent store and completion hand uh, stores and here we have yeah, we have to catch it. the errors here so in this in and then we have to write if let error equal to error then we have the fatal error on so on result error and then we have the string manipulation so error dot localize description so here it goes and then we have to uh, configure the merge policy to handle conflicts so here we have the new context dot merge policy equal to ns merge policy dot merge property store trunk here it goes this is our init first of all we want to create our uh, 
save new to do item. So let me just see. Let me just hide this one. So funk save new to do item. And it just take a title of the string and then it will return a boolean for us. So uh, make sure when you uh, go to to do item, click on this sidebar. So here in the uh, properties, click the entity and then make sure the code gen is set to class definition and then build your app. So command an R to generate our uh, data model class. Uh, it doesn't matter if it failed or not. So here we have now access to to do items. So we have let to do item equal to to do item and the context would be view context. Then we have a to do item dot id equal to uuid dot uuid string. Then we have to define the title. So to do item dot title equal to title that we fetch it. And to do item that is completed equal to false. Then we have to do and try catch. So do try. You have to save it. So do try. Then we have a view context that save. Then we have to return the true. And we have to catch some error if it occurs an error. So we have a print here. Failed to save the to do item and we have to print out the error here so error dot localized description and then we have to return false so this is it and then we have uh, to fetch our data so funk fetch items and it returns us an array of to do item to do item yep and here we have let fetch request type of ns fetch request and we want to fetch to do item here then we have a to do item dot fetch request then we have a do and then we have to return try view context dot fetch and the request would be the fetch request that we built and we have to catch it some error if an error occurs so print again failed to Fetch to the items. Then we have to print out the error. So error that localized description, and we have to return an empty array. So this is our fetch item, and then we have to delete the item so we have a delete item and we have an item type of to do item and then view context that delete and we have the item here so we have uh, to do and try for view context that save and here we have some error <clears throat> so print 
failed. Failed to delete to do item. Then we want to print out the error, so localized description. And the last one, we have to update the item. So we have the func update item. And it requires an item, so we have to, to do item here. <clears throat> so after that, we have an if let is completed. <clears throat> nope, that's not it. Yep, uh, let me just add it. So we have to define, uh, we have to pass the is completed as a boolean type, an optional, and for instance, we call it nil. So here we have if let is completed, complete, complete, all of these completed, completed, and then item that is completed equal to is completed. So after that, we have a do try catch. So do try save content uh, view context. Let's say, and then we have to catch some error. So catch print out. Failed to update to do item, and we want to print out the item. So here, item uh, error dot uh, localize description. Then we have to do nothing. So this is our data controller <clears throat> with core data. Then we have to uh, define our view model here. So new C file and view model. Uh, sorry about that. I want to delete that and we want a new group here. So a new group, new model. And then here we have the list view model. List view model. So we import foundation and then we have a class for list view model and uh, confirm to observable object. Here we have add published variable list items, an array of to do item equal to an empty array, for instance. Then we have a private variable for initializing our data controller. So we have a data controller equal to data controller that share. <clears throat> yep. And here we have an init function that we want to do something here. So we want to fetch items uh, when the view model uh, initializes. So here we have the font fetch items. And here we want to say list items equal to data controller dot fetch items. So here we call it in our init function. So fetch items, this is it. And here we have a delete item, so funk delete items. And here we have add and we have offset. So here we have index set and offsets. Let me just see offsets. So offsets equal to dot for each. We're gonna loop through each uh, index that we passed, and yep. So let me just see index, and and we have let item equal to a list item, and we're gonna grab it, 
and we have data controller that delete item and we're gonna pass the item here so this is it and here we have we want to uh, direct manipulation after deletion to ensure the ui changes so we have a list items that remove at offsets of offsets so here it goes then we have the move item to do the functionality for moving the priority of the task. So here we have the func move item. And here we have from. And this is an offset. So we have the index set. Then we have two and destination. Destination. Again, this is an integer. So here we have list items that move from offset that goes offset to offset and this is a destination. So this is it. This is change the uh, offset of the um, tasks and show it uh, based on the index in the view. So change it for example from one to zero or from two to zero you can uh, use it like that so after that we have a add item so funk add item <clears throat> we're gonna uh, take a title string type then we have uh, to say data controller dot save new item and the title would be the title and then we gonna save each items so we directly uh, again fetch item to uh, update the list items to ensure that the uh, our UI updates based on that the list item is published so when the list item is changed the uh, ui will change uh, respectively so and then we have a funk update item item so here we have the item and this is a to do item then we have data controller dot update items and here we have to pass item uh, so it's completed we have to pass the uh, not uh, item is completed so if the uh, item that is completed equal to false it uh, this is equal to true uh, because we say this is not true so this is this is not false so it's true <clears throat> so the uh, is completed equals to true and then when it, it equals to true when we toggle it it is like a toggling is completed uh, it is equal to false then we have to save fetch items to ensure we update our <clears throat> update our UI so here we have it uh, we have to let me just see yep two assets here let me just delete an icon here so here we have two assets one up icon and then the logo here so we're gonna make our storyboard here and a new file here so command and end so we have a launcher screen launcher screen that's storyboard that's it here you choose the view here and then we have the tint for system yellow color and nope this is the default sorry about that and for the background we want to use system yellow color here uh, that's it so I'm gonna delete this one and in the safe area we have a logo here 
let me just add it so add a logo here image view here and our image would be our logo this is it <clears throat> good enough and the make uh, good yep then we're gonna <clears throat> go to our app settings and here we have the launch screen and we have to define it to launch storyboard so let me just run it to make sure that is good yep here it goes <clears throat> we have our launch screen with our logo and yep so let me create a new group here naming view and for views we have a no item view first of all swift ui view no item view here so let me just clear this up and yep right First of all, we have at state private variable is animating equal to false. And then we have a scroll view here. So scroll view, then you have via stack and your spacing would be 20 and then we have to create some uh, variables here so first of all check private variable checklist image and some view And then we have image, system name, and this is the checklist. Checklist, let me just add it. So check list image. Yep, it's so resizable. And the foreground style would be dot yellow. And a scale to fit and we have to frame it frame and the height would be 100. good then we have informative text so private variable informative text this is some view And here we have real stack. We have a text. Let me just add it. So informative text. So here there is no item yet. There is no item yet. And the font would be the title. Then the foreground uh, font weight would be that semi bold. And here we have a new text. And you can click the add button to add a bunch of bunch of items to your to 
to do next. Here it goes, and this is it. So after that, we have an action button here. So we have our private variable action button. And again, some view. We have a navigation link here. And the destination uh, for now is our content view. Content view. Then we're going to change it. <clears throat> Let me just I forgot the parentheses here. So we have a text. <clears throat> Add item. So let me just add it. So action button here. Add item. And before we're going to start with be that white. Then we have to frame it. And the height would be 55. And the frame. And uh, max width would be that infinity. And for the background, we have to say if is animating, then it would be dot red, else would be dot yellow. And here we have a corner radius of 10. And here we have a padding, and we have a horizontal padding. Horizontal and if is animating and if this is dot horizontal for about that if is animating then would be 40 else would be 80 and here we have an offset for the y is animating then minus seven else would be zero and we have the shadow the color if is animating then would be that red that opacity would be 0 0.4 and else would be again that yellow that opacity 0 0.4 and the radius would be if is animating then would be 4 else would be 10 and x would be 0 and y would be 10 uh, 20. yep that's it i think what is going on horizontal yep. it is good <clears throat> And here we have the animation, so private add animation. And private funk. And we have guard not is animating else would be return it. So with animation and we say animation dot is out is out and the duration would be 1.5 and repeat forever and auto reverse true then we have the is animating equal to the dot title dot top. so this is it and then let me just add it to our And here we have padding 
the top and will be 30. And multi line alignment takes align will be dot center to centralize our text and we have to frame it so max width would be 40 400 and here we have a padding and dot frame and max infinity and max width dot infinity and alignment would be and max height so I got that max height would be dot infinity also and here we have an appear and perform the uh, add animation here it goes why is it not toggling it we try yep that's working so this is good and here we have no item view and then we have to create another one for add an item here new view add item add item view here Here we have to define our environment. So here, presentation mode. And then here we have the private variable of presentation mode. For uh, we're gonna use it as a sheet. So we we want that to tell the CFUI the presentation mode is dismissed or not. This is it. So we have add state private variable to text field text equal to an empty string here, and then we have add environment object private mm, variable of list view model type of list view model. And here we have to uh, <clears throat> declare a state for our uh, alert state. So we have private private variable of alert state. This is an alert state. State and this is an optional and call to nail, for instance. So we have to define uh, our state for now. So we have private extension of add view, add item view. Then we have a struct and we have alert state. This is identifiable, so we have a let id equal to uuid. Then we have a let title and type of a string here. And we are good to go. So in our body, here we have a scroll view. And here we have the stack. Then we have to define our extension here. So uh, one way to uh, add uh, components to a code to a reusable component is that that you uh, can define a private variable of type some view here, and then you can use it in your view. The another way 
is that you can create extension for your v parent view. So we have here we have private extension again for add item view. Here we have variable of text field. Again, this is some view. Then we have a text field and we say type here and, oops, and for the text we're gonna use dollar sign text field text and we just add it to our parent view so we have a text field here yep right there so we have the padding of dot horizontal horizontal and we have to frame it and we have height 55 then we have a background color so color and ui color so dot secondary system background <clears throat> and here we have corner radius of corner radius of 10 and here we have it so right there and we have another uh, variable for save button again some view and we have the button that goes for save and then for the action we have to save button press and we're gonna build the function uh, in the sec so let me just create a new extension so this is for our component the first extension the third uh, the second extensions uh, is for the action so private extension this is good for the uh, uh, cleaning your code uh, to make sure the relevant things are together so here we have extension for add item view so here we have funk save button press and then here save button press so uh we're gonna handle the save button in a sec and here let me just add it to this one so save button Here we have it, so we have foreground. Foreground style would be the white, and then we have the font dot headline. Then we have frame it, rough height 55, and then the frame, dot frame again, and dot max infinity, and max infinity, dot infinity. And the background would be that yellow, that yellow. <clears throat> then we have a corner radius of 10. Here we have it. <clears throat> so let me just add a padding here. And we have that navigation title add an item. And we use this emoji and we have alert the alert the item let me just alert and yep the item would be 
dollar sign item state alert state and here we have to say state and then we have the alert title with the text state dot title this is good so here we want to just handle the save button and then we want to uh, save the state for the alert so first of all we have the guard and text uh, let me just first create our uh, validation text is pro pro create and this is a boolean type returns a boolean so if text field text the trimming characters and then in white space and lines that is empty or text field text dot count less than three so here we have alert state equal to alert state and then for the title i want to use this string here i just copy and paste this so your new to do item must be at least three character long so if the text field is empty or this is uh, less than three characters it would be this uh, show this message here and then you have to return false if not we have returning true so here we want to say guard then the text is appropriate else we have to return it and if is appropriate and this validation goes well so this view model add item and the title with the text with text and then the presentation mode presentation presentation mode let me just see what is going on yep this is what's happening i have a typo here so here we have presentation mode dot wrap value dot distance so this is our um this is our add item view and then we have the list row and we have two more views so first of all we have the list row view so list row view and then here we have an observed object so at observed object variable of list item to do item and here we have the edge stack here so let me just figure out preview and then we're good to go so here again we want to use the uh, private extension here for our list view list row view and then we have the variable of a status image some view and then here we have the image here so system name system name for it so if the uh, 
list item that is completed then we have to check mark check mark dot circle else would be just dot circle and the foreground style if list item is completed then would be that green else would be that red <coughs> And this is it. So after that, we have a variable of title, text, and again, some view. And text. List item dot title. Unknown. Yep. Good to go, and here it goes. Let me just add it to our HS text. So, status image, and then we have the title text. And here we have a spacer. And font would be dot title two. And we have a padding of dot vertical and eight. So here it goes, and this is it. And the last one, I think, uh, the list view. So list view here. And for a list view, we have an it at environment object. So at environment object here, I have a list view model. So list view model here. And then here we have a Z stack. So Z stack. And we have to say if list view model at list items that empty is empty. Then we have to return the no uh, item view and the transition would be that opacity and that animation that is in here it goes else you want to list view so <clears throat> this is it And here we have dot navigation title to do list. And I use this emoji. And after that, we let me just uh, nope. So for our toolbar, so toolbar. Uh, we have the toolbar item toolbar item and the placement will be that navigation bar leading and the content would be uh, this button And again, a toolbar item, placement would be but navigation title dot trailing. And here we have the uh, add button here. So let me just. Uh, create a new extension here so here we have the private extension list view then we have the variable of list view some view that is here so here we have a list 
we have a for each loop and in that we have a list view model dot item uh, list items and then we have the list item in and list row and here we have class list item and here we have on tap gesture and the code goes with animation and here dot linear then we have the list new model dot update item and we have to pass the list item and then we have on delete so on delete and uh, on delete let me just clear this one and for the perform we have the list view model that delete items and on move we pass the list view model that move item Yep. And here we have dot list style. List style would be dot plane. And here we have variable of add button. Some view and navigation link. Add and then here we have add and item view here so let me just correct it in here in our no item view uh, we have a navigation link yep the destination would be add item view so we are good to go and here in our content view we have just passed the list view and in our to-do list app we have to pass uh, we have to define our uh, our view model here so add state object private variable for list view model equal to initialize the list view model and then we have window group then we have the navigation view navigation view then we have the content view here and then we have the navigation view style stack navigation view style and then the accent color would be dot yellow and the environment object we pass that list view model that we initialize it so I think we are good to go. Let me just run it. So command and R.
Yep, this is running. Here it goes. I add a new item here, so add a new item. I press coding. Press save. This is good. Let me just add A. And here we have an alert, so add something here. You have to save it. So here done, undone, done, undone, and I did it. So let me just grab this one. Here it goes, and we have done. Yep. And let me just do the coding. Let me just rerun the app. So this is good. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe my channel, Piazzati Dev, for more exciting videos. I have a bunch of videos, a playlist for Swift UI that you can learn a lot from it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, uh, subscribe me, hit the bell notification. And